everyone, so today we're going to be looking at minority influence and as always I'll be following along with the AQA psychology textbook with the green haired girl on. So your things that you need to know and be able to recognise, so I've included the specification point. So this states that minority influence including reference to consistency, commitment and flexibility. So what I think you need to know is that minority influence relates to three factors. It's the consistency, commitment and flexibility. Minority influence leads to internalisation. Now we talked about that on our first video and what that means is conversion. So you're converting, you're publicly and privately agreeing with that, whatever it is that you believe. And also you cannot get a 12 or a 16 marker on Moscovici. I'm going to go into Moscovici's study in a bit more detail than what the textbook does. But you can get this 16 or 12 marker on Ashton Bardo and Milgram. You can get it on any spread of the textbook. But Moscovici as a question cannot be asked for marks because the specification doesn't specifically say Moscovici on it. You can just use Moscovici for AO1 of this spread. It gives it nice padding because it then enables a lot more AO3 points and I will draw on some of those. What do we mean by minority influence? Now, when we think of minority influence, we need to be thinking of a group of people or a single person who influences the behaviour of other people. So some examples of this are the suffragette movement, the campaign against smoking, which led to the smoking ban of 2007, and also Martin Luther King. Now conformity is relating to the majority, whereby the majority does the influencing against the few people in society that don't believe that. So this is why conformity can also be known as the majority influence. Now, in both cases of minority influence and majority influence, it may be a person being influenced or many people. If minority influence is consistent, the minority can create social conflicts within society and among members of the majority. And what minority influence intends to do is lead to this idea of internalisation, which where you have public and private attitudes and beliefs change. So our first thing that we need to look at is consistency. So in order for a minority to establish the views and get the majority on board, they need to be consistent in the views and that will increase the amount of interest they get from others. We have two different terms here that come under consistency. We have something called synchronic consistency. This is where the minority are all saying the same thing. And we also have diachronic consistency, which is where the minority have been saying the same thing over a long period of time. And that's when it makes other people think, oh, well, if they keep saying the same thing, maybe I should think the same as well. So they need to make sure that their points are consistent so that their views are taken much more seriously. And what that does is it encourages the majority to rethink their views. We also have commitment. So what we mean by this is when the minority demonstrates their beliefs such that they get involved in extreme behaviour, which then draws attention towards them. And commitment is key to drawing attention towards the issue. Importantly, the activities should put the group at a risk because they need to show how dedicated they are. So this is when protest can lead to arrests. And when this happens, it enables the majority to think a lot more closely and they end up paying a lot more attention. And this is something known as the augmentation principle. And this is when, if you know what the constraints are for what you want to do, so if you know that there is a law, but you still think, well, what I'm thinking is much greater than that barrier, it means that your motive for acting is stronger than the constraints. And that's what the augmentation principle means. We also have flexibility. So Nemeth argued that consistency is not the only important factor because the problem with this is if you're so consistent that you just repeat the same thing all the time, it seems very rigid towards people who haven't yet thought that thing that you're trying to put forward. And it can be off-putting towards the majority. And this reduces the likelihood that they will then convert to that minority position. 
So what we find is that minorities must adapt their point reasonably and have valid counter arguments if they're going to succeed. And what's so vital is that a balance is striked between consistency and flexibility. The process of change. So if you hear something new, you might think about it, especially if the source is consistent and passionate. This is relating towards deeper processing, and this is important in conversion to the minority viewpoint. So the rate of conversion increases over time when more and more agree with the minority view. So this is the idea of the snowball effect. You see the picture, you see a snowball coming down, it gets bigger and bigger as it collects more snow. And this is the same in the sense that a minority can become a majority. So something that only has a few people involved in gets bigger and bigger as time goes on because more people change towards believing in what was the minority viewpoint. So I've just included Moscovici et al's study of 1969. It is not essential to know this, but I think if an essay comes up, you should be including it. It will be on the mark schemes and it will form a lot of your AO3 if you get a 16 or a 12 marker. So Moscovici's aims were that social influence occurs not just through compliance with the majority, but also through a change in opinions. So that's that idea of internalisation. So the procedure, there was 32 groups of six women. Out of the six, two of them were confederates in every single group, and the two confederates were the minority. There was 36 blue coloured slides, and there was filters that varied the intensity of each slide. Participants were told to report the colour out loud. They thought the experiment was about colour perception. That was what they were told. You're doing an experiment on colour perception, not what the true aim was at the top. And the Confederates either answered first and second or first and fourth. And they consistently said that the slides were green. That was in the first experiment. In the second experiment, they do exactly the same as what they were doing in the first, but later they also do an additional task of writing answers down. In the third experiment, Confederates answered green 24 times and they answered blue 12 times, so they're not consistent then. And there was a control group in each of these experiments which had no Confederates in. And the findings were this, that participants agreed with the minority on 8.42% of the trials. So that was when the real participants said that the slides were green. And 32% gave the same answer as the minority at least once. In the second experiment, there was greater private agreement with the minority than in public. So when they wrote their answers down, they agreed much more with the minority than when they had to say their answers out loud. And in the third experiment, we see a very, very small agreement with the minority of 1.25%, and that was when the Confederates were inconsistent in their answers. And we've got the conclusions, which are that the minorities can influence the majority opinion. So the third experiment shows that consistency is key. So you could almost turn that into an evaluation point that there is research to show that consistency is key and then give the Moscovici study as otherwise agreement drops when the Confederates aren't consistent. So higher agreement with the minority in private suggests the reason why people tend to not agree with the minority is because they don't want to be seen to agree with a deviant minority in public. So that you can use there the private agreement in the sense that participants were able to write down their answers. And that was where we saw people genuinely starting to believe that the slides were green as opposed to blue. Okay, so we've now got the evaluation. So that's your AO3. So there is research support for consistency. Moscovici's study shows a consistent minority opinion had greater effect on others than an inconsistent opinion. So remember that when there was that inconsistent opinion, there was an, an agreement, a conformity of 1.25% as opposed to the 8.42% when the minority opinion was consistent. Wood et al, so there's more support here, 
doing a meta-analysis with a hundred similar studies found that minorities who were consistent were most influential. So therefore we can say that consistency is a major factor in minority influence. A further strength is research support for depth of thought. So we have a change to a minority position which involves the depth of thought. When we think of a minority, think of always deeper processing, we have to think harder. And Martin et al. supports this because he gives participants a message supporting a particular viewpoint and then measures their support. What happens then is that one group hears a minority agree with that initial view another group, here's a majority group, agree with the initial view. Then both groups are exposed to conflicting view and attitudes are measured again. Now what they find is that people who heard a minority group agree with the initial viewpoint were less willing to change their opinions. So it supports the idea that minority influence relates to this depth of thought. A limitation is artificial tasks. So a limitation of minority influence research is that the tasks involved are artificial. For example, judging the colours of slides in Moscovici's study. This means that the tasks have low ecological validity, meaning they aren't representative of real life situations as this is not a common everyday task. Therefore, it questions the validity of the experiment as we don't know whether a different task such as recycling opinions may mean a group conforms more to the minority as it is a real life issue. So I've put two different evaluation points for the evaluation extra bit in here now. I find that the textbook is a little bit confusing and very vague on the last two points they make. So I've put here research support for flexibility. So we have Nemeth in 1986 that has four different people and one of them, so that's the minority, being a confederate. And what they have to do is decide how much compensation to pay for a victim of a ski lift accident. And when this confederate argued for a low amount and refused to change his position, he had no effect on the majority. But then he compromised and suggested a slightly higher amount, but not as much as what the group were saying. The majority changed their opinion to a lower amount. So this does therefore suggest that minorities need to be flexible if they want to be influential. And finally, Moscovici's study had low population validity. So Moscovici tested the colour slides on female participants. He didn't use males, so straight away I was hoping you could see that that was a limitation. So it is gender biased as males were not tested. It therefore has low population validity because it's only representative of the female gender. And males may conform more or less than females, we don't know. So this is an issue because it can't be generalised to the whole population as males and females may conform differently to minority influence. I've had a look through the papers and this question from June 2018 was on A-level paper one. So the question says, using your knowledge of minority influence, explain how Jenny might be able to persuade the rest of the department to accept her view. So it's all about using consistency, commitment and flexibility here. And it would want you to apply this. Remember, this is an item that are two marks. So AO2, six marks here something that students I don't think really recognize and can sometimes just make points and here I have a touch at the bottom no application to Jenny's situation maximum two marks so if you talk all about consistency commitment and flexibility and you just ramble on about that you'll just end up wasting time because you can only get two marks if you don't apply anything to Jenny this is a AO2 sort of application. If you get an item, it's not always that it will just be AO2 marks. You need to look at the question. Here it says, explain how Jenny might be able to. If it's got that sort of phrasing in, it's going to be wanting you for AO2 marks. And possible content, that is almost like a model answer there.
Jenny should demonstrate consistency by not deviating from her view that not grading work is a good idea despite social pressure. So it might be worth that you have a look at the actual item itself and read it through. So it's all on about teacher marking and whether putting grades on makes students more lazier, basically. So, yeah, do have a go at that without looking maybe entirely at all these points and see what you come up with. But really, practicing is the way to understand the mark schemes, understand what the examiner wants and understand the phrasing of the questions. The more you look at these questions, the more familiar you will become with that phrasing and the more you will know how to answer it. And that's something that a lot of students won't do. So if you do it, you'll be much more ahead of others. I've also found this question. Uh, these couple of questions from the AS paper one of June 2016. So this in this instance, we've just got a sentence on the second one, and I'll show you how that looks on the mark scheme. So the first question wanted you to name three behaviours that enable a minority to influence the majority. If it says name, it literally just wants a word or a few words you don't need to start writing out sentences what it was looking for is the consistency commitment and flexibility and then it gives you other things about credit other relevant behaviors and it will give you those examples there but what we should be focusing on is those three behaviors which i'm sure many of you would have got this it was all on ao2 marks even though it's just a sentence some people kind of just ignore that and think oh they see three behaviors and just go off without reading it properly but you must link to Mar marcus there and it gives you your possible applications but try and think of your own as they'll be relevant it always says credit other relevant applications the application must relate explicitly to the content of the STEM. There's no point in going off trying to think of, oh, what, what else could they be trying for me to write down sort of thing. Use what is given to you. It's there to guide you and to help you answer the question. OK, thank you for listening and best of luck with all your revision.